Three main areas make securing your organization seem impossible. Users are the first major challenge. Very few of your users are security experts, and no matter how effective your training programs are, they will make human errors that compromise security. It only takes one user to click the wrong link or open a phishing email, and the doors are open to hackers. The IT environment makes security even more complex. Users need varying levels of access, but the environment rarely allows for that granular control. Nor is the environment static. Users introduce uncontrolled software, patching is an ongoing task, and rollouts take time. All of these create opportunity for attackers. When it comes to threats, the bad guys are more agile, more creative, and often better funded than any security department will ever be. The number of threat actors is growing. Threats are highly targeted. 70 to 90% of malware is unique to an organization and unknown to antivirus vendors. And sophisticated attacks are leveraging common, trusted applications and websites. And on top of all this are zero-day threats, which are yet to be identified. Fortunately, there's a straightforward solution to most of these security challenges. Simply remove admin rights. Study after study shows that implementing least privilege by removing local admin rights is a key way to eliminate critical vulnerabilities and stop threats before they start. There's only one problem. How do you take away admin rights without seriously hindering user productivity or overwhelming the service desk with tickets related to user privileges? Are you really caught between either compromising security to empower users or implementing security rules that restrict user productivity and increase support costs? With BeyondTrust, you have a better option. BeyondTrust Privilege Management for Desktops lets you manage user privileges, secure your environment, and even protect trusted applications, all while reducing service desk calls and improving user productivity. We have worked with thousands of global companies, helping them strike the balance between security and flexibility. We challenge the perception that removing admin rights is hard by enabling organizations to implement true least privilege without over-restricting users. We give back control of admin rights usage through pragmatic whitelisting of privileged applications and tasks. We protect vulnerable applications, enhancing security for the users and for the business. And we give the insight needed to evolve as the organization's needs change. Finally, our experience implementing across 8 million endpoints, global deployments, and a myriad of industries has helped us create a deployment approach with a fast time to value. While traditional privilege management solutions begin with discovery and policy refinement, BeyondTrust protects your estate on day one, allowing you to analyze behavior and refine policies as you go. In this demo, we'll show you how. First, we'll show what occurs when you remove admin rights without using BeyondTrust. Typically, when you remove admin privileges, you solve a security challenge, only to create a productivity challenge. This can be seen when a user tries to run or install an application that may require admin privileges. Here, they are presented with an admin prompt, and of course, they don't have the credentials to be able to continue by themselves. The same thing happens when they want to update an application or driver. If they need to change system settings, they can be faced with a prompt too. A good example here is a network adapter. Modifying this is something mobile users or engineers often need to do. There are also other advanced use cases, like elevating a console. As you can see, the user requires admin rights to do this as well. Not only does this poor user experience hinder productivity, it's also going to generate a help desk ticket or some sort of exception process for that user, resulting in an increased administrative burden on the IT service desk. This is one problem BeyondTrust solves with endpoint privilege management for desktops. Another area that the tool can address is with application control. Application control prevents unwanted applications from installing or running. Sometimes these are merely unwanted applications, other times, these are potentially dangerous applications. Some of these may be applications that can be installed even when the user does not have an admin account. So in addition to solving the admin rights issue, BeyondTrust also lets you control unwanted applications. A third area of vulnerability is trusted applications. Trusted applications are especially vulnerable to fileless ransomware. In this example, an infected email attachment, an Excel file labeled sales stats, has been set up to run a PowerShell script which infects documents on the computer. Excel, Outlook, and PowerShell are all trusted applications. 
However, in this case, a trusted application is being allowed to run another trusted application that's part of the operating system. Beyond Trust Privilege Management also resolves these vulnerabilities with trusted applications. Now, let's review each of these scenarios with Beyond Trust Endpoint Privilege Management for desktops enabled. We've created quick start templates based on many years of experience implementing the product. These allow us to provide a really good user experience out of the box. Once you've imported a template, you'll notice some default work styles for Windows and Mac. By way of example, we'll enable the All Users configuration and the High Flexibility configuration. Next, you may want to change the default messages and branding so it's more customized for the organization. You can modify the messages and prompts users see, and you can change images and logos displayed. With those two policies enabled, the user experience is now very different. When attempting a driver update, for example, the user just sees a notification prompt. If we try to install an improved application, like Notepad++ or Paint.net, you can see that the user is given a simple confirmation prompt. If, however, it's an application that's unsigned and comes from the internet, then we're going to ask the user for slightly more justification. The net result is that the user is able to run those applications without being prevented, and we have recorded that action occurring. We can also implement blacklisting to prevent unwanted applications from running. And again, we can customize the message that's being displayed here. Because Beyond Trust knows what applications have already been pre-approved, we can reduce the prompts and obstacles presented to users. A good example of that is changing an IP address. When we modify properties of the adapter, we're not presented with any kind of prompt. We call this seamless elevation. We also improve the user experience when it comes to advanced use cases, such as elevating a command prompt. Here the user tries to elevate using Run as Administrator. Instead of blocking the user, we can ask for more information, let the user put in their own password to continue, and off they go. All this is where the privilege management portion of the tool comes into play. We can change messaging, we can customize branding, we can set varying levels of restrictions on applications. In short, we have full control over what the end user experience is going to be. And every time the user sees one of those messages, we are logging that activity. Then as more and more applications are added to seamless elevation, we can disable the logging for those applications because they've already been approved. For example, if you add Notepad++ or Paint.net to the whitelist, then the user won't see a message, nor would we see an event logged. We don't need to record things that we already have pre-approved. This brings us on to the application control part of the demo. As you've already seen, we can implement blocking of certain applications. We also start gaining visibility. When my user tries to run Dropbox, for example, even if they cancel it, we are still able to track that attempted installation, which is a step toward a more effective whitelist. You can see this when you navigate to the reporting folder. Here we've tracked processes, installations, and attempted installations. The key reason we want to track these is that if we ever want to implement a more rigid application whitelist for our low flexibility users, then we know what apps should be added. From there, it's simple to copy an application and add it to a policy. For example, we can take a canceled installation attempt, copy the application, and since we want it to be accessible for low flexibility users, we navigate to that group and paste it in. We can also choose to trust the publisher certificate. So if an application is not in this list and it's not part of the operating system, then for our low flexibility users, it's going to be blocked. So let's switch down to that user to see exactly what happens. Low flexibility users are people whose applications are all delivered via a central mechanism, perhaps installed by the service desk, and the user shouldn't be making any changes to their machine. These are very static users. Now, when the user tries to run an application, you can see that this time the user isn't able to continue. In addition, there are ways we can allow exceptions. Because we integrate with ServiceNow, the low flexibility user can enter some details about why they need the application. This will create a ticket in ServiceNow where the help desk can investigate for a resolution. When Beyond Trust Privilege Management sends a ticket to ServiceNow, it attaches a unique code to the instance. If the help desk decides to allow this application, they can use our challenge and response generation tool to create a response code for the user, and the user can then enter this response code to install that application this one time. Although we could easily access the system using Beyond Trust Remote Support, We've been able to resolve this ticket without any connectivity to the user. 
This process saves time for the service desk and it's a better experience for the user. In addition to these ad hoc installations, any application that we manually added to the whitelist, Spotify in this example, will be allowed to run. Fortunately, most of your whitelist has been built automatically using our policy templates. Our automated whitelist is made up of applications that are deployed to the machine via the organization's deployment tool, like SCCM or Altiris, or those allowed through group policy. Also by default, we whitelist applications that are installed by a genuine administrator. Maintaining the whitelist is easier too. Most of our competitors' whitelists are oriented around hash values, but those can change rather frequently. We look at values like publisher certificates. This means you won't be wasting time continually updating rules for things that are constantly changing. So now we'll move on to the third area of privilege management for desktops addresses, trusted application protection. To demonstrate this, we'll navigate to our high flexibility user and import our trusted application protection template and enable it for that user. You can see here that the user is not prevented from executing apps such as PowerShell. In fact, the user even has permission to run this elevated if they need to. Now with trusted application protection enabled, let's repeat that fileless ransomware attack through the Outlook attachment. This time, the now protected user opens an infected email attachment. When the user launches the malicious Excel document, we can identify that Excel is running and we can identify any child process that may execute from there. Now, even when the user enables editing and enables content, the PowerShell script is instantly blocked. We're not looking at what the PowerShell script is trying to do. We're simply not allowing one trusted application to launch another trusted application. Unlike the detection-based approach used by typical antivirus solutions, this is a very proactive approach. In addition to managing privileges for desktop users on Windows and Mac, we can also manage user privileges on Windows servers. Now, most organizations will have significantly fewer server admins to manage. However, the critical nature of these systems makes it imperative that we maintain security. To demonstrate this, we've logged onto a Windows server with a sysadmin account that's set up as a standard user. Since we're logged on with a standard account, there are a lot of things we can't do, for example, if I go to the event viewer and attempt to look at the security logs, I don't have the permissions. I might also try to run a common application like the registry editor. Perhaps I need to make a change to software under HKey local machine. But as you can see, if I try to make any changes, I don't have permissions. It would also be really common for a sysadmin to need to manage Windows services. For example, if I attempt to restart a Windows service, once again, that's going to be prevented. My only way to interact with these services is to run as administrator, but here I'm prompted for credentials. This prompt would appear for any application I need to run as admin. Finally, if I want to do something like change an IP address, the same problem also exists. All of this, of course, is behavior you'd expect when admin rights are removed. Fortunately, Endpoint Privilege Management makes it easy for you to enforce least privilege for Windows Server admins without hindering their productivity. To implement this, we'll navigate to Privilege Management Settings. This is a group policy object designed to apply the configuration to this machine. And then we'll import our template and we'll choose Quick Start for Servers. Our Quick Start template for Windows Servers is designed as an infrastructure style policy. It lets you manage permissions both for those sysadmins who need to manage entire Windows servers and for those who need to manage specific applications on the servers. A good example of the latter might be the EPO administrator. Once we select Create on this policy, Beyond Trust imports our Quick Start for Servers configuration. Now I'll simply enable those configurations, and that's all I need to do to take care of my server support team. The three work styles at the top are common across all of our users. The audit admins work style monitors any administrators that do log in. For example, if someone needs to come in with a genuine admin account and do something on this machine, then this policy will allow them to continue, but will log all that activity. The audit run as work style lets us monitor whenever someone is switching into another account. This gives us more granular control over which permissions are allowed. And then we have the all users work style. 
which is the same as our desktop's policy. This covers our deployment software and all the common applications across all of our servers. So now with this enabled, I'm able to run some of those applications I wasn't able to before. For example, if I come to Event Viewer, I can now run as administrator. When prompted, I can just enter my credentials, and now I'm also able to access the security log as needed. If I want to make a change to my IP address, I'm empowered to do that. And as you can see, we can modify the messaging shown here, just as we could in the desktop world. I'm also able to elevate things like Registry Editor now. For something like this, you may want to require more context and then allow the administrator to make the change. I can run services as administrator too. And each time we're just making sure that the user has the permissions to do exactly what they need. Users are able to install applications and run other things. For example, I can elevate IIS and make a new connection. Finally, we can allow administrators to switch identities. This is common whenever you need to make a change in Active Directory or the Group Policy Management Console. So let's say I want to modify the server configuration. At the moment, this console is running as my user. To switch identities, I just right-click the application and choose Run as Different User. Then I enter the credential for that other account, and now I have access to make a change. Note that we've recorded this action. If you open up the event viewer and look at the logs, we can clearly see that someone has used the run as command and that they're logged in with that secondary account. In short, we're able to provide a very low risk way of allowing our server administrators to make changes while still maintaining full tracking of everything they do. So that's server administrators. Now let's take a look at application owners. To manage application owners, we just enable the app support rather than the server support work style. Now with that work style in place, if I try to do anything requiring elevation, I'll be prevented. With this work style, I'm not able to make changes to the registry editor or elevate anything like the event viewer. All of these actions will be prevented because I belong to the application support work style. I can only work in those applications for which I'm approved. Of course, this approach brings multiple benefits. First, you'll be able to demonstrate compliance with all the major mandates by achieving least privilege and whitelisting on your endpoints. Both because secure PCs are cheaper to maintain and because end users are more enabled, you'll reduce service desk costs significantly. You'll also achieve true least privilege with no admin rights in the business at all. And finally, you'll protect your business from a host of external threats by implementing security measures that actually improve productivity. Not only that, you'll also have options for scaling and managing privilege management across your entire environment. Beyond Trust Endpoint Privilege Management for Desktops comes in a variety of deployments. So whether you need to manage a hybrid environment or need to scale to hundreds of thousands of seats, you'll be able to achieve compliance and improve productivity quickly. In conclusion, with Beyond Trust, you'll be able to eliminate admin rights, closing gaps in privilege management, implement application control without hindering user productivity, enhance security by stopping vulnerabilities between trusted applications, and gain actionable insight into your organization with enterprise reporting.